obsolete technology is a technology that is no longer in use because other, more advanced technologies have replaced them. And yes, it's true, our cars are full of new electronics these days. But just like paper maps and phone books, automotive vacuum as a power source has become obsolete. One of the common uses for vacuum controlled motors was air conditioning blend doors. They worked well, but they are now replaced with electronic controlled motors. And even though these systems are old, there's still a lot of these vehicles on the road today that still have them. For example, a 2000 Ford Expedition still has them. So let's take a look at a couple examples of how to fix them. Now we're working on an 04 Ford, but essentially the same thing would apply to any car that has a vacuum controlled air door control system. Some of them are controlled with electric motors that open and close the doors. Some of them are controlled with vacuum. If yours is controlled with vacuum, it's probably a lot like this, and it probably has a check ball or a check valve. So it operates by vacuum, and the engine creates the vacuum. You know, when the pistons come down, they suck in air. That's creating vacuum. So we're tapping into that vacuum system. In other words, the engine or the intake is our source of vacuum. Now what's happening here is we have good vacuum as long as the throttle plate is at a set position, either closed or partially open. But when you go to a more wide open throttle, you have less vacuum. So whatever is controlling those doors has less ability to do so, or less power. Now in this case, all of that control is right in this corner. It could be located differently on a different vehicle. But for right now, everything's going to be right here. So let's take a closer look. Now this is the area that we need to be looking at. This is called the vacuum control valve. Some of them call it the control ball. But there's a valve in here. Now let me explain how this works and then you can understand what we're doing. As I pull this over here, you can see this vacuum hose coming this way. That's going to the intake. So in other words, we got vacuum coming from the intake pulling against this valve. This is a one-way valve. It pulls this way. So you have, it's creating suction, and you have suction going this way and this way. So what we have here is negative pressure on this side of this valve. The intake is pulling vacuum this way. It's also pulling it here and here. This line right here, plastic line, the vacuum, goes, curls around down and goes into the firewall, into the dashboard, to the control unit that controls your blend doors to blend the air wherever it is supposed to go. This one here then goes this way, goes back behind the battery, there's a canister, or it's called a vacuum reservoir. That holds vacuum. When you're running the engine, you're pulling vacuum here, so it's pulling vacuum from here, so this reservoir is getting, it's pulling vacuum in it, or it's making negative pressure inside the reservoir. Now you can't see it because it's actually buried back behind the battery, but it's negative pressure. So, when you step on the throttle and you open the throttle plate, there's positive pressure on this side because it's no longer drawing the vacuum. So since there's positive pressure here, but you've got negative pressure on this side, it pulls that check valve in and does not let anything flow this way. But you've got negative pressure in the reservoir that comes around and goes through here and goes to the firewall and keeps negative pressure or vacuum on the vacuum control module. Now what's happening is, when you go to wide open throttle, you're accelerating up a hill, you're losing vacuum somewhere in this side. It's not a loss of vacuum over here. You know that because it's actually working correctly unless you're going up a hill. But when you go up a hill, you should be drawing, since you no longer have vacuum from the manifold, you should be drawing vacuum from the reservoir, and you're not. That's why it defaults to the defrost position. So where is our leak? Here's how we test it, and here's how we find our leak. Now our engine is running, so we should have good vacuum over here on this side coming from the engine. So what we want to do with this is tap into it with our vacuum gauge. We just simply created a T, and what we're going to do is unplug the reservoir 
tap into that. So we have our source vacuum. It's pulling vacuum from here. This is our gauge. It's pulling vacuum from the reservoir. This is the reservoir. This is the dashboard control panel. So if we pinch this off, it's leaking. That means it's leaking somewhere over here. To which side? Is it leaking on this side or this side? So let's eliminate one side. Let's eliminate this side right here, which is your dashboard side. And we're going to pinch it off here. Now you can see that we're holding vacuum. Our gauge is reading. We're only pulling vacuum from this one side. And our ga gauge is holding. That tells us that our reservoir is good. It's actually holding vacuum like it should. And when I open this, we open ourselves to this side over here. So when I pinch this off again, we lose vacuum. So our vacuum leak is somewhere in this side. We know from here, back this way is good because we did not drop. This is our reservoir. Our reservoir is good. Our leak is somewhere on this side. So I'm going to take our gauge out of here. I'm just going to plug our vacuum reservoir back in just to keep it out of the way. As you can see this little plastic line goes down, goes into the firewall and then it travels over to the control panel. We don't know where the leak's at so what we're going to do now is smoke it. And the smoke should tell us to leak. So now we're turning on our smoke and you can see it. It's a real faint smoke. So what I'm going to do with that is connect it right in here. I'm going to turn it on and that should fill it from here to the dashboard with smoke. What you look for now is smoke escaping. Seems like there's a little bit of smoke coming from down in here in this area. I'm going to try and pull this up here. Or not. Now if you look right here on this black plastic line, you can see there's a spot where it's been rubbing. We give it smoke. It's really kind of hard to see on the video, that smoke coming out. But you can see the small little hole right there where it's kind of cracked. We happen to find this about four or five inches down from the fitting. But it essentially could be anywhere. Anywhere along the line, it could actually be even in the dashboard. But as you're looking for it, look for places where it may be bent or rubbed through, places like that. So what we're going to do here is just snip this. At this point you can see how bad the line was. We're going to go back to some good stuff. A little bit more. Same thing on the other end. Trim it off the other end. We simply cut out the bad spot. We put in a new section, a lar larger section, so that it will bend easier without being a problem. So we replaced the bad section of plastic hose. Now we're going to hook it up and retest. Now these check valves are known to go bad, so this is a new one. We're actually going to replace this check valve at the same time because I don't want to come back because of a bad check valve later on. But this is the brand new check valve. Again so that you understand this is your source of vacuum so it's pulling this way. There's a check valve wall in there so it will not allow it to go this way. It's a one-way valve. So when it is pulling this way you have vacuum this way and you have vacuum this way. But when you lose your vacuum, the vacuum that's in this reservoir here the check ball is preventing it from drawing vacuum here so it should be sealed off 
but it does allow the vacuum in the reservoir to pull it from the dashboard into the reservoir. So I'm going to take the old one out. We'll put the new one in. Now, to test all this, we're going to hook our vacuum gauge back into it. So I'm going to tee that off right here. So we start the engine, you can see we got about 19 pounds of vacuum. That is from here. There's our check ball. Now if we want to check this, if we want to check the check ball, if we squeeze this here and cut off our intake vacuum, it should hold. The reason is it's still got vacuum from the reservoir. Now when we accelerate, Accelerate our vacuum stays. When we go to accelerate or climb a hill, we should not lose vacuum, so our air conditioning should stay in the right mode where it is controlled from in the dashboard. It should not default to the defrost position.